I thought it might be interesting to compare some of the technology inside a more modern radio to that found in older vacuum tube radios. For this video I'll look at a modern reproduction of an old radio. I'll also say a few words about how to spot a modern reproduction of an old tube radio to help you avoid inadvertently buying one in error. For the purpose of this video we'll look at a limited edition Grundig Heinzelmann radio that my wife bought for me as a gift around 1998. This was made by Grundig as part of a series to commemorate classic Grundig radios, in this case a replica of the Grundig Heinzelmann model originally made in 1945. While I think of it as modern, I've had the radio for some time and the manufacturing date on the back is listed as October 1997. Let's look at how this radio differs from tube radios of say the 1930s through 1960s. The case is quite similar, although not identical to the original Heinzelmann model, but with more modern electronics inside. It also supports both AM and FM reception, while the original was AM only, predating the FM band. The dimensions of the case would have originally been determined by the size of the components inside, most notably the tubes, power transformer, and a metal chassis, and the need for some ventilation. In this unit, it's driven by aesthetics, in this case to reproduce an old radio and not by the size of the internal electronics, which as we'll see are quite small. Opening up the back, we see that most of the electronics are contained on a single printed circuit board. It's all solid state, uh, that is, no vacuum tubes. As in most modern equipment, it uses several integrated circuits or chips rather than discrete transistors. In particular, it uses a KIA 6040P integrated circuit, which provides most of the functionality of an AM-FM radio receiver in one chip, just requiring some external components and an audio amplifier. It looks like two other ICs are used, one of which has a small heat sink and is presumably the audio amplifier. The passive components, resistors, inductors, and capacitors are similar to a vintage radio but smaller due to the lower voltage and power levels needed in a solid state radio. The electrolytic capacitors are also similar but smaller due to improvements in modern components and there are no wax paper type capacitors that are often seen in old radios and are prone to failure over time. There's a ferrite loop AM antenna. Prior to the 1950s, engineers didn't have this type of material available to them and generally used large air-wound coil antennas or required an external antenna. The variable tuning capacitor is also smaller than in vintage radios thanks to the use of plastic as the dielectric insulating material between the plates rather than air. The IF transformers are also much smaller, again due to the better core materials now available. The loudspeaker is also likely a little smaller than in the original radio. Loudspeakers have improved somewhat, but this is probably also a cost issue as the speaker would be a significant portion of the material cost. Power transformer is also small as only a single voltage was needed and is low voltage around 12 volts as compared to a tube radio. The use of a printed circuit board reduces the labor needed for assembly and the likelihood of wiring errors over the old point-to-point -point wiring methods, which was very labor intensive. For cost reasons, this is a single-sided printed circuit board and uses cheaper phenolic material rather than fiberglass. It has component designation silk screen, but no solder mask. The build quality is a little sloppy. I see some poor soldering, the flux residue is not cleaned off, and some wires are longer than needed. The FM antenna wire around the line cord is held crudely in place with some electrical tape. The manual for the radio says the case is handmade. This was no doubt the highest cost component of the radio. The wooden case is made of medium density fiberboard or MDF which is an engineered wood based sheet material which has consistent properties and can be machined. The original radio was likely solid wood and or plywood. This radio is now 25 years old. By comparison a radio made today in 2023 might be a little different. I would expect even more integration. For example as little as one IC might be needed with no need for tune circuits. It would likely also use digital controls for volume and tuning and maybe a digital display. The components would almost certainly be all surface mount technology which can be assembled by automated equipment. It would also use lead free solder and components. Any dial lamps are present would be LEDs rather than incandescent bulbs and the design would minimize if not totally avoid the use of any wires or other manual assembly. 
Customers would likely expect other features such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity. Given that, the unit could still likely be sold at a lower cost in real dollars than this one, particularly if it used a case which didn't require as much manual labor to assemble. This unit was made in China, which is usually the case today, but I would expect the build quality to be a little better than seen here, as China has significantly improved their manufacturing in the last 20 years. As a comparison, here's a Victrola kitchen radio that has a retro look, but was bought in the last two years, as well as AM and FM modes, it can stream audio over Bluetooth. Looking inside, we can see much smaller circuitry with fewer components. All controls, including tuning, are digital, and Bluetooth support is provided by a small module. The speaker, power transformer, ferrite loop antenna, and MDF case are much like the other radio. On a related note, you often see modern reproductions of old radios. They regularly show up on auction or classified ad sites and may even be described as old tube radios. They may have what appears to be a known maker like Curtis, Crosley, or Victrola. While these can look nice and be safer and more reliable than a vintage tube radio, they are not vintage tube radios, so here are a few ways to detect a modern reproduction without opening it up to look inside. The presence of modern features like a cassette tape, Bluetooth, or USB support. The presence of an FM band would mean that it was made since 1948. Stereo FM would mean no older than the 1960s. If you can, check the weight. You can expect it to be quite heavy if it's using tubes. Also, if using tubes, it would need ventilation, and you can usually see some of the tubes by looking inside the holes or slots in the back. The rear panel may also have dates or country manufacture that will indicate if it's original. We can look at this Thomas radio as an example. It was made around 1990. Tip-offs that it's not a tube radio include the nameplate says Thomas Collector's Edition Radio. It has FM and AFC modes. It has a cassette tape player. The rear panel says Thomas Collector's Edition Radio and it has two Made in China stickers. The ventilation holes in the back are not adequate for a tube radio, and the back is made from modern engineered wood. That's all for now. I hope you found this little comparison of radio technology as interesting as I did.